Today on Codependent, I'm going to talk about keyframes. So in traditional animation, we have the concept of keyframes, which are uh, ways of defining the period in time uh, at which certain values will hold. So for instance, you could say at time zero, uh, an object is going to be at this location. At time one, it's going to be at this other location. At time two, it'll be over here. And then an animation can automatically calculate the uh, sequences that happen between these periods in time. Right? So in traditional cartoon animation, what would happen is the master animator would define the before pose and the after pose and then hand it over to the minimum wage animator who would then actually uh, draw out the frames um, in between those two and that was called the in-betweens. So that it'd be in between this pose and that other pose over there. So keyframes can be used to define the sort of endpoints of intervals and then animations can actually automatically calculate the values between them. So uh, we sort of had virtual keyframes prior to Flex4 because we would define, uh, let's say in a move animation, you'd have x and y values from, x and y values to, and then we calculate the values in between there. So you can think of the from and the to values as being sort of the keyframes that define the extreme positions, and then we'd automatically calculate the values in between those. Uh, in Flex4, we actually have r a real concept of keyframes in a class called keyframe. And this allows you to define uh, time value pairs. So at any particular time, you can define the value um, that that object takes on at that time. So let's take a look at an example application called multi-step animation. So normally, if I wanted to animate this button um, between two end positions, I would say, OK, it's moving from here. It's moving to there. You run the animation. It does the right thing. But what if we actually want to move it in a more interesting path over time? So in this case, I actually want to move the button uh, over a sequence of steps there. So you can see it sort of zigzag along there. Now we could actually do that with a sequence of animations, each independent one saying, well, from here to there, from there to there, from there to there. But with the new keyframe capabilities in Flex4, we can actually define all of those uh, as keyframe, uh, uh, keyframe stops along the way that the animation will go to uh, as it runs the animation. So we've defined that particular animation here where we have the button here. When we click on the button, we're going to play the mover. Uh, animation, and the mover has two motion paths in it. One of the motion paths is defined on the property X, and the other on the property Y. And X says, OK, I have a bunch of keyframes in here. And at time zero, it's not going to give a value at all, which means it's going to lazily calculate what that value is, which means it'll go out and just grab the value from the object and say, where are you now? And I'll use that as my starting position. At time 500, this is 500 milliseconds into the animation, it's going to be at the position of 200. So x is going to take on the value of 200. When we reach uh, time 500 at 700, it's going to take on the value 150 at 800 to 250, and so on. Similarly, we've defined um, keyframes for the motion path on property y as being, OK, well, at time 0, we'll start from wherever we are. At time 500, we'll go to this other value. Time 700, this other value, sort of similar to the way we've defined it um, for x. So then we run the animation, we click the button, and it goes to all those values. And each of those values basically defines what happens over the interval coming up to that value. Right? So, and then it'll automatically calculate the values that lead up to it. Now, notice that although I've defined all these uh, keyframes for y, and they happen to map to the same times in the keyframes for x, we actually don't need them. We could delete a bunch of these and say, OK, y is simply going to move um, from this, from the starting value at time 0 to this value of 250 at time 1,000. And then x is going to have a, a more interesting and complicated uh, series of stops along the way. Um, and it will also work. Maybe a different animation may be uh, uh, you actually wanted the original one, but it's just an important point that the motion paths that we're defining on x and y are completely independent, and you can use keyframes whether you want or not. Now, eventually, what I would like to do with keyframes is define the ability to have interesting motion paths so you don't have necessarily linear movement between each of these individual keyframes in the animation. Um, for now, it is linearly interpolated, so as you move the button along, um, it's actually uh, moving in a linear uh, sequence between each of the stops along the way. Um, but it's still useful for some situations. And in fact, we use it internally um, when we're uh, animating the transform effect. So if you declare a move and a rotate and a scale and another move, and they're all running in parallel inside in a single um, transform effect, which I talk about in another episode of Codependent, what we're actually doing is creating a complex keyframe sequence internally uh, where we have potentially several keyframe stops along the way for um, each of those moves. So a move may be defined just between two endpoints, 
But if you have a move here and another move there, what we define internally is a single move with several keyframe stops along the way that gives you the animation that you were looking for. If you want to see the code for this application and other related applications, uh, check out my blog at graphics-geek.blogspot.com.